This video is brought to you by Scopic.com. Get yours now. Hey guys, welcome back. This is Phil from the So you're gonna take a look at the LG K8 2017. It might be sold under a different name in your region. US Cellular is selling this for LG Aristo. LG has it as an X300 in South Korea, but still it's the same K8 2017, aside from little differences like the RAM amount. It's pretty standard mid-range phone, but I have a few things that I really uh, hate about this phone. The first big thing is a display. I know this is not an expensive phone and I'm not expecting like a you know, vivid, lifelike AMOLED panel on it, but even considering the price, it's way too undersaturated, it's way too dark, and it's way too pale. What you're seeing right now is a maximum brightness and it still is very dark, aside from the theme, by the way. And those colors like the red, green, blue, whichever color you put in, they come in really, really undersaturated. And also the white balance is really weirdly said, you will have to probably turn on the comfort view, which is intended for killing off the blue light of the panel, but it gives a little yellowish tint to it, making that bluish panel slightly better. And the other thing following that are the lack of sensors. At the first glance, it seems like a lot of sensors, but in reality, they're mostly duplicates of the single sensor. Having no gyro sensor, okay. Having no LED, I guess, but no compass, meaning that you cannot turn your phone in the maps to know your direction. One good thing maybe is that it's got a taptic feedback, so when you touch on that soft key, or when you're typing on that stock keyboard, it will give you the vibration feedback. And again, I don't wanna be mean on the cheaper phones, but speaker is below the average standards. And as one personal side note, I don't get why they should have a power button on the back when it doesn't even have a fingerprint reader. LG has had that rear key for a long time, along with the volume key. That was actually pretty handy for uh, capturing your screen, but this now has a volume rocker on the side, power key on the back. That seems a little bit off to me, but maybe it's going to depend on your taste. Now to the actual performance of the phone. It's got a Snapdragon 435 quad-core processor, two gigabytes of RAM for this one, but most of you are going to have the one with the 1.5 gigabyte of RAM, and 16 gigabytes of storage, leaving you not so much as a user of available storages, but you have a micro SD card slot for expansion. Surprisingly enough, LG opted for the Android Nougat on this guy. This is very, very new software. You can slide from the left side on your settings to quickly hover off your menu. You can quickly tap twice on the multitasking key to switch between the apps, and you can tap and hold on that button to have a multitasking split view right there. Overall performance is better than I thought, launching the app, closing the app, launching a new one, closing the new one, launching of the camera, uh, switching the camera between rear and front could have been faster, it's okay, but still, it's got a good performance overall. Next up is a camera. There are a number of the ways that you can launch the camera. Firstly, you can tap to wake your phone, uh, pull that icon over there, or you can simply press the volume down key quickly twice to launch up the camera. It takes a bit of time, but it launches fairly okay, I guess. And considering the price, the photos are okay. LG claimed that this is the best camera in class. I don't quite agree. Photos get smudged out in the darker environments and it's a bit shaky, but considering the price, I guess that 13 megapixel camera is okay. The selfie camera isn't exactly amazing, but it's okay considering the price. And it's also got a few neat features like you can use your hand to gesture shot, auto shot your selfie. I don't really find it extremely useful, but it's there. And next up on the line is the battery. It's got 2,500 mils of battery and the screen on time lasts about three and a half hours to four hours. I did use it for full screen brightness because I had to. It was way too dark if said otherwise. And I mostly surf the web on my LTE network all the time. So if you use a Wi-Fi network or do some less energy intensive job, then it's going to last longer, but still it's not exactly the best battery that you can get. But on the other hand, it is replaceable so you can get another one to have it as a backup. Charging is done through the micro USB port on the bottom along with that earphone jack and microphone, and it's painfully slow. It takes two and a half hours to fully charge this guy, and the default charger has an output of 0.85 amps. And even if you use a faster charger like what we have here, quick charge enabled charger, it's not going to accept that charge and still demand two and a half hours of your time. I'm not expecting a top-notch technology like the Quick Charge 3.0, but at least two amps charging would have been nice. Now it's the time for the verdict. So what is the KA2017 like? It's very generic, I should say. It's like the generic guest phone you have ever seen. I know that's grammatically wrong. Still, it doesn't excel at anything, but it's got a pretty bad screen. It's missing the compass, so you can't use the map properly. I don't know, I always have a question. Else is not doing exactly great 
in the market. If they want a better sales, I think they should have better specs for the cheaper price than Samsung. But this is similarly priced to the Galaxy J3 2016, but does not excel in any particular part. Especially screen is better with the Galaxy J3 2016. So I'm not sure what LG wants here. If you already own a KA 2017, it's an okay phone. It's acceptable. You can live with it. But if you're thinking about getting this as a new one, I'm not entirely sure if this is worth the price. It's an okay phone, but it's not that well balanced. It's Nah, I don't know. It doesn't have that charm. It's pretty well built as a plastic phone though. I'll give it that. That was LG's new mid-ranger KA2017. Hope it helped. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comment and we'll come back with some more reviews. In the meanwhile, you can meet us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. Ciao.